this is not a clickbait. <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly how, where students face a lot of difficulties later on if you just teach them speed equals distance over time, which is wrong, okay? So let's begin. So usually what happens is in lower grades, we introduce the idea of speed and we say the formula is distance over time. And then we give problems like this. We give them a problem like a car travels 100 kilometers and it does that in five hours, calculate the speed. And so what we do then is we say, okay, so speed equals a distance over time. So speed is equal to 100 kilometers divided by five hour. And that gives us 20 kilometer per hour and everybody's happy. And then we go on to the next problem. But let's come back to this problem and let's ask this question. What does it mean to say that the speed is 20 kilometers per hour? What does that number represent? Let's think about this for a while. You may say, well, 20 kilometers per hour, well, it means that the car travels 20 kilometers every hour. But do we know that the car is doing that? I mean, all we know that the car traveled is 100 kilometers in five hours. That's all given to us, right? So it's totally possible that the car might have traveled 90 kilometers in the first one hour and then probably it slowed down and then it traveled lesser and lesser distance. So then what does it mean to say that the speed of this car is 20 kilometers per hour? Ah, you may say, Mahesh, but what if the car was traveling at a constant speed? It never slowed down or sped up. It was traveling at the same speed. Then it should be traveling 20 kilometers every hour, right? Agreed, but it's not mentioned that. And we don't know that the car is traveling at a constant speed which means what does this number represent? Oh, the number represents that if the car was traveling at a constant speed, which it may not be, we totally understand that, but if it was, then the car would have traveled 20 kilometers per hour. That's what distance per time gives you, not the actual speed. There's this assumption that happens. That if it's traveling at a constant speed, then how much it would travel every hour, that's what distance per time gives you. Do you know what we call this whole thing where you assume that something is being equally divided, even though it's not really, but you assume it and then calculate how much that is? We call that as averaging it out. And so this is not really speed. What we have calculated is average speed. Now at this point, before you start commenting and attacking me and saying, hey, stop sensationalizing things like this. We know that it's average speed. In the lower grades, we call it speed. In the higher grades, we'll talk about average speed. I'll give you three reasons why that's a very, very bad idea. Reason number one is that science is about thinking, right? So just the, just the exercise that we did is an amazing opportunity to think, to ask the students to think about what that number means and uh, talking about averaging and to actually make their brains roll. So why would you want to lose that opportunity? Therefore, it doesn't matter at what grade you're introducing this idea, but whenever you do, do introduce the average idea because it's accurate and it makes people think. The second most important reason why we should do this is because we already have an intuition for speed. Whenever we say speed, we go back to thinking about sitting in a car and the car traveling very fast. In other words, kids have an intuition for the speed that you see in the speedometer. And guess what? This is not your average speed. Okay, so let me tell you what happens if you don't introduce the idea of average and you just say speed equals distance over time. Okay, so they will learn the new formula for speed that is distance over time. Their intuition for speed is that it's the speed that you see in the speedometer. And by the way, the speed that you see in the speedometer is called instant speed. Speed at that particular moment when that photograph was taken. It's not an average speed. And kids have intuition for that. And now that you've taught them the formula distance over time, what they will do is they'll connect these and they will think, oh, the speed that you see in the speedometer, the instant speed, that is distance over time. That's what the students will make the connection. And that is absolutely wrong. And this gets ingrained in their memory. And as a result, in the higher grades, when they actually do have to calculate instant speed, they end up doing mistakes. And that's such a painful thing as an educator because you have to make them unlearn and teach them that, no, 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 no. That's not speed, um, that is average speed, and this is instantaneous speed, and this is so much problems that end up having. There's a third reason why you should do this. Once kids truly understand that this is an average speed but not the real speed, they're gonna ask you the question, why bother calculating this in the first place? It's not real, why should you average things out? Like, why do you do that? That's an interesting question again for an amazing discussion. 
Here's my answer, which I think is super relevant to kids' lives, everyone's lives. See, in reality, in our real life, when we're talking about distance, we use time. I say I'm five minutes away from you. When I'm figuring out how far another city is, I don't talk about how the distance is, like the, in kilometers, I care about how much hours it takes to go from one city to another. Even Google Maps, for example, gives us the time. The time, because that's what's important for us. And in all of these things, we can ask ourselves, how does it do that? How does Google map know exactly the time it takes to go from one place to another? Ah, what Google map does is takes data of the distance traveled by the various vehicles around that time, adds them all up and calculates the average speed, and then assumes that your vehicle will probably also have the same average speed. And then from that, if you know the distance, you know the average speed, you can calculate the time. So average speed, knowing average speed is super duper important in our real life if you really want to calculate how much time it takes to go from one place to another. I don't care about your instant speed. That's gonna keep changing. I care about your average speed. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this important? <laughs> so hopefully I've convinced you why it's important. Even you know if you're teaching these two kids to go into the nuances without dumbing it down and teach them exactly what it is. So speed is not distance over time. It's the average speed and all the nuances that come with it, it's important. The average speed is distance over time. See you.